Hi all, I have an absolutely fantastic game to show you today. This is a great game pick by Vekoslav Nemes, who is the author of this amazing new free, free short and sweet modern defence course you can check out at kingscrusher TV slash modern. Well worth checking out. Uh, we see in this game the dreaded, uh, the dreaded Austrian attack. This game was actually played in the Austrian Team Championship of 2015, so maybe the players had that on their mind to play kind of thematic openings. Uh, so we have uh, playing white, Jovanovic, uh, who's a very, very strong grandmaster, uh, against Richard Report, who's a really up-and-coming, you know, world-class grandmaster as well. We have E4 being played. So... We have here the modern defence, which sets the game up nicely to be an Austrian attack. So we have d4, bishop g7, knight c3, d6, and now this very aggressive f4, which I guess may have been putting off a lot of players playing uh, the modern system because yeah this is quite uh, aggressive it gains space in the center potentially and you're always kind of perhaps wary of the e5 push if your knight's going to f6. We have a very interesting move here, a6. Tiger Hillop Hessen uh, recommending this move, a6. So not committing the knight, knight f3. Instead, uh, going for a fianchetto of the queenside bishop. So this is permitted here in this game. No a4 here. We have bishop d3. There is a loose piece here in black's position, the rook. And in fact, uh, you can think that maybe this bishop is not just supporting e4. Uh, sometimes this bishop can actually point in this direction and maybe the other bishop and you get these bishops kind of raking down these two diagonals so is black actually exposing some liability some crown jewels on the queen side here we see knight d7 and without waiting for a prompt with knight f6 white immediately plays e5 and we have now uh the move c4 c c5 rather uh so this looks a little bit of a controversial move, isn't it? Just uh, asking for this bishop e4 move here. Is it overly provocative? Uh, you could say, well, black's trying to sort of blow up the white center with this very aggressive undermining. White uh, does actually play bishop e4 here, attacking this rook. If e takes d6, then there's a kind of central collapse. C takes d4, and if d takes, knight takes this position, black's getting a really, really nice position. Uh, that's really fantastic. And this bishop can maybe come later to the diagonal. It's, black's got a big advantage there. So we have bishop e4, rook b8, and now bishop e3. So those bishops are really sort of looking at doing the damage on the queen side potentially. Uh, so we have actually black just carrying on uh, smoothly with b4, not worrying too much. The knight goes to e2. It is technically possible for the knight to go to a4 here. On queen a5, there's the move c3, and this is actually going to be uh, playable uh, for both sides after c4. It should be about equal. So we have knight e2, though, in this game. A knight on the rim is dim, so maybe you know it seems more sensible in many respects just to put the knight on e2 anyway. Uh, so we have knight h6. Talking of knight on the rim being dim, though, is this dim or is it going to use the f5 square or even poke into g4? We have d takes c5. So this is a very interesting provocation by black because isn't, isn't something quite nasty happening with these bishops, these raking bishops. Uh, we have here knight g4 and uh, the bishop going to g1. And now this move would seem technically impossible because of a series of forcing moves. But guess uh, what Richard Report plays in this position? A really spectacular move and concept generally black to play here for 500 points 500 points if you can get it okay your calculation might be going completely against you on this because d takes e5 you might have calculated to be totally impossible on knight takes c5 before we get into that after bishop takes queen takes d8 this position uh, kicking the knight back, uh, it's it's uh, very pleasant for white. Uh, so, and on um, here, bishop takes c5, sorry, on d6, 
takes c5 this might actually be plausible just about for black but with h4 white's in the driving seat this is a horrible target the h file is about to be ripped apart uh, even if the knight goes back to g4 and white should be setting on a very significant advantage here with a violent kingside attack so that's one of the dreads of you know often playing like this you know you get hacked on the h file with too much hypermodernness going on but anyway in this critical uh, moment if you had guessed d takes e5 collect your 500 points it's this move it seems to run into some key forcing moves so the first one being c6 so where is the knight going isn't there queen takes disrupting casting rights the knight goes to f6 hitting the bishop on e4 white though has the forcing move queen takes d8 check and now uh, instead of moving the bishop which allows things like e4 bishop a7 so this is isn't this winning the exchange or can the rook escape well in fact if the rook goes to a8 then there's c7 check picking up the rook and yeah the bishop's not going to be taken huge advantage uh, the other possibility here is for the rook to go to b5 but it, it turns out here bishop d3 safeguarding the bishop attacking the rook and if here then bishop b6 check and casting queen side gives white a clear advantage uh, here by the way if rook a5 then there's bishop b6 check picking up the rook so yes there aren't too many options here after bishop a7 yeah rook a8 rook b5 they're both terrible options so instead we have the fantastic move king c7 so white now picks up the exchange so well is this exchange sack really uh, worth it uh, at the moment uh, well the, the bishop can't go back as of e4 but it can be protected uh, or h3 a counter attack on this uh, knight is possible and perhaps the best move was h3 uh, in this in this moment so e takes for example like this and it should be about even the position technically so h3 is, is the uh, probably the best move to play right now but uh, we have actually instead knight d2 protecting the bishop and it's not obvious what compensation there is for the exchange yet not completely obvious or is it would you play black already here let's do a pawn audit one two three four five six seven so only one pawn missing one two three four five six one pawn for the moment for the exchange bishop d3 uh, because uh, if knight takes f4 then bishop h6 and this is a really really nasty dark square bishop without a counterpart giving lots of tactical pressure on those dark squares uh, so for example castling rook d8 this position e5 and this is just winning material so this is just really really nasty uh, let's look at this again bishop h6 uh, if um, knight d3 here then just bishop takes d2 check and knight takes e4 check picking up material so so bishop d3 was played so it is uh at least the pawn for the exchange right now and that's it but if you look at the pawn structure after e5 it's reassuringly seemingly quite solid now and white still has weaknesses uh like here and here this dark square bishop has got a lot of dark square targets like b2 and this pawn is is kind of a, a big liability it could be picked up potentially so um black's got a really good compensation going on white desperately tries a3 in this position uh, if he just castles then for example king c7 uh, and this position is looking really really nice you can have a monster knight coming to e3 and huge compensation look at this really really aggressive pawn formation uh, blacks really taking control of the central squares huge compensation Blacks very very strong there so e5 though looks also immediately it looks as though there is something suspect about this especially with a knight coming to that very central lovely square e3 an octopus knight so to speak so a3 is is a bit of a desperate try for, for counterplay uh, if casting instead king c7 so this position uh, with f5 knight g e3 g5 e4 blacks getting a big advantage there 
So A3, we have E4, and this is a really nice tactic, uh, trying to liberate this bishop, trying to take on B2. The bishop uh, didn't go to C4. It's, it would be inviting Knight E3 there, so that's that's pretty nasty. So we have actually Knight takes, Knight takes, Bishop takes, Bishop takes B2. Even though this is on the same line as the King, it's possible to do this here. Rook B1, B takes. Okay, so the A pawn's very very strong, dangerous pass pawn there. We have White castling. If Knight takes F4, then there's Rook E8 with the King in the center. That's just losing material. So White castles. G5, just holding that pawn. We have now knight c3. King a7, unpinning that bishop, threatening the knight. Uh, if king c7, this is also actually plausible. This position is plausible. Black's still okay here. It's that strong, the position. So king a7, though. Rook takes. Yes, this is looking very bad. After f5, bishop d5, rook e8. So now if rook takes b2, then there's rook e1 checkmate. The knight's covering the escape square. Let's just show that. That will be checkmate. So uh, can't take that point. Pawn. So rook e8, we have h3, knight f6. Rook takes, but now rook e3, trying to win material. Rook b3 and black can forcefully liquidate into a very easily won endgame. Knight takes d5, taking the rooks off. Bishop e6. And in fact, uh, with this skewer here, this is pretty nasty. Uh, knight e7, the knight's actually stuck here as well. It's a pretty tragic knight. After king b6, uh, the game ends. It was pretty hopeless for it anyway, even without this trapped knight. The knight's going to be engulfed with the king soon, with king c7 to d6, can't get out. So the game actually ended here, white resigned. For example, b4, king c7, king f2, king d6 wins the knight. So I'll take you to that game end position. So we saw here in this game, in summary, a fantastic idea, an exchange sacrifice, innovation in this line, which saw uh, black having huge compensation for that exchange. Uh, so it shows that you can actually fight against the dreaded Austrian attack, even if you're playing in an Austrian tournament, Austrian team championship. Uh, so quite thematic for the context, the venue as well. OK, I hope you enjoyed it and check out that free short and sweet modern defence course at kingscrusher.tv slash modern. Thanks very much.